Not yet. Which, ca which camera am I talking to? Either one, he says. All right. What up, guys? Uh, as you can see, it's probably 6:35, 6:34, actually, because um, we're never on time. 6:33. No. And you exaggerate. Too. We've been on time like the last six times. There's no way. Well, Somebody, yes, I'll give you a hat. Last time we were early, we I'll, mentioned it. I will give you a raised hunting hat. If you can You're find, shipping it then. If you he's can constantly giving find stuff a out, day I that we have been it. on time. Because this is ridiculous. Last week we were literally three minutes early because we even said it. You weren't here yet. No. 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 We have to uh, evolve Your in old here. age memories get into the way. So, anyhow, welcome everyone. Uh, it's Tuesday evening. And the thing that is so cool is it's that time of year. And I say it's that time of year. It's that time of year where... For us, the summer camps are starting. To, we have one camp left, and that's our North Dakota camp. So we've gotten through a bunch of camps. It's time for food plots to go in. Deer are growing. You can actually tell who is going to be out there this next year. Um, it's the time for driving down the gravel roads in the evening and glassing in the fields. And, you know, even though here in Iowa it's still hot, um, there's a lot of evenings now that are cooler and thunderstorms roll in and, bean fields and corn fields are growing and so it's just like you start getting that itch and I don't know about you guys but I know that um, I mean I'm talking major chiggers uh, when we're talking getting the itch and I got yeah. a video guy sitting over there that looks like he has the mumps or measles or something like that chicken pox <laughs> but and what are you doing right now scratching your knee you're scratching got, your leg I have them too No, I didn't hear about this. So he puts itch on his it's, all over his feet. Or what is it? I don't, it's some kind of like numbing gel. It's supposed to numb the itch. Well, so I, I used that on my chiggers, on my feet. And then I wasn't really thinking about it. And I started eating some popcorn. And, your and then I noticed numb. in about a couple minutes, I was like, man, my lips feel really weird. And then I was like, what the heck? And then I realized that they were numb and that I was like and then I was like okay it's because I've been eating the popcorn after and I didn't wash my hands after I put on that chigger stuff and so uh yeah I had it was like getting my wisdom teeth pulled again my whole mouth was numb all right well we're going to give you guys maybe the best piece of advice that we could give you when it comes to this time of year and that is and I don't know if I'm saying it correctly it's either permanent permarethrin uh is the but if you don't have this stuff where you can spray your clothes and they tell you don't spray it on your skin. <laughs> Dan. Dan, I'm probably going to die here in the next few years, but I'd rather die than itch um, because I have, I, I mean, I spray it right on my skin, even though I'm not supposed to, but it does keep the ticks and the chiggers off. Problem is when it's hot out and you're wearing shorts, it doesn't do any good. Um, so you still get skin contact with them and then it does nothing stops those. But I mean, we couldn't live in the woods doing this without that stuff. Uh, I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable. The, and the chiggers are worse than the ticks, you know, cause absolutely. you can't see them yep. and, they, and they bite you and so many times, but sure. But it's worth fighting through all this because tonight what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, um, getting some trail camera photos and, and making a switch, um, honestly, or, or we're specifically going to talk about scrapes. Um, and I know everyone's probably going to go, why are we talking about deer scrapes on, well, I guess tomorrow's the first day of August. Um, and that is because we have found that scrapes aren't something that you just want to focus on November. I mean, it just isn't. You want to start thinking about these and one of the things that we started doing last year, and we got some video we'll show you guys here in a few minutes, is we started making a switch. Uh, I don't know if it would be right now, but real close, within the next week or two, um, I don't really care. A lot of times people are putting their cameras on the edges of food, they're putting them on trails. Um, but what we will start targeting here pretty quickly is even while the deer is still in velvet, is start making mock scrapes. And I'm telling you, it is a game changer as far as how many deer we see show how many bucks we see show up at these scrapes 
Right, and we don't move all of our cameras to the scrapes. We still keep some on food sources oh, and stuff sure. like that. Um, but I, so I guess first, why don't you discuss what a scrape is in case somebody doesn't know. Uh, I think a lot of people know what a scrape is, but they don't necessarily know what, why deer are using it and what it really does for well, the deer. And, and I feel like well, the one thing that we should make sure that we do um, explain is there's a difference between a scrape and a rub. Okay, so a rub, when we refer to a rub, is where a deer will actually rub its antlers on the trunk of a tree. Um, and when they're doing that, they're doing that for several reasons. One, they could be doing it to take velvet off, which won't happen here for another month or so. Um, two, they can be doing it to mark that, their territory. They use a forehead gland and a preorbital gland and things like that um, to rub on these trees. And they're actually marking that tree to say, I was here. Um, so there's different reasons for these deer to do that. But a scrape is where they actually paw the ground and they will pull that ground back and then typically they're going to step forward in it and they're going to urinate in it. And when they do that, sometimes they'll even uh, defecate in it as well. Um, but when they do that, they are definitely... You've got to use such a scientific word for that. Well, they poop in it. How's that? <laughs> Much I mean, better. What's the difference, huh? So... Yeah, they do here too. <laughs> Tomorrow's the thirty first of July. Oh, see, I was thinking, I was thinking today was the thirty first. So sorry, I guess. Uh, yeah, but, but I believe you. Yeah, so um, I think that that's in in that preorbital too. I don't think a lot of people know when when a deer is rubbing their eyes on those sticks when they're act there's a is that gland right here it's is right, it right there it's right there right they're actually, on the inside of your eye there's a gland there that they're actually putting their eye on to get that scent um on that scrape and then the reason that they are peeing in in the scrape is so that now when another buck comes there they can still smell that scent they're basically letting uh, other deer know that they're there well, and it can definitely well, be, but that goes right across the tarsal gland so it's another right. glandular scent. So the tarsal gland is the one that, and I don't know that people do it anymore. Maybe, I don't even know if you ever learned it, but when I was a kid. Oh, I did because you cut all of them off. No, but, that but, tarsal gland. but there was at one point, I'll guarantee you someone out there will say they still do it. And that is when I was a kid, you were taught, you had to cut that gland off the back of the deer's leg. Otherwise it would taint your meat. That's what everyone said. You got to cut that off. So I knew what a tarsal gland was from there. Now I cut those off and I save them. I put them in Ziploc bags because they got a really strong odor and I'll use those in conjunction with a decoy or I'll use those sometimes as a, uh, a natural scent um, to put out there, especially when you're, we're talking about dealing with um, mature deer, deer that are older. Um, we want those deer. Sometimes I want to challenge them and the only way I can get them to break their pattern or to come over and check something is by using another deer to do that. Um, but there's nothing better than a deer that came from an area or something or a deer that you know um, Do So you have um, You should pull up splits real quick Because uh, we actually just talked scrape, about that last mean? week too. Well, just, just that you were sitting him? over that scrape. No when you shot him. Oh Okay, well, uh, let me see. I got because it scraped it. I was a big part of the reason that you killed that deer when absolutely you um, so we're going to show you that uh, Dad's biggest deer ever so far. Which camera am I talking to, left or right? Huh? Well, I need something to look at. I want to make eye contact with everybody out there. Okay. It doesn't matter what David wants to talk to because he'll talk to anything. You give him a break. I don't know why forever. I'm even looking for Anyways, this. Um, so he killed a, a, his biggest deer, 170-some inch deer, two years ago now on uh, set up. The stand that wasn't necessarily set up over a scrape because we already had the stand there, but the deer made a scrape there and made a really big scrape. And we had a certain bus that was one we called splits that was hitting the scrape consistently. He was there all the time. We were pretty sure that he was living very close to that area. He gets the wind right. He goes in there and he sits in the stand. And, and this is uh, October 23rd is when you shot him? 22nd, I think. So the 22nd or the 23rd, and he rattles and shoots his buck within five minutes of him rattling. And we believe that a big portion of the, part of the reason that he actually killed that deer is because that scrape was right there and that buck felt as though there was somebody else in his territory and that he'd done a good job marking that and saying, hey, this is my area. And so he was coming in to defend 
um, his territory, which gave Dad a shot. Do you need me to find it? No, I'm almost there. Well, that's not right because you're at the completely wrong spot. There's a completed show somewhere that has it all edited and everything. Right there. Mm-hmm. Move. That's what I just was on. No, you weren't. Yes, I was. No, you weren't. And we have video to prove it. Oh, you crazy man. So you want me to do it? We should have downloaded it. Well, we're going to have to I'll, skip I, that. It's on my, I have it on my hard drive, if you grab my hard drive. Well, we can but just right go now, into something else. Later. No, for right now, hold on. I'm going to go there. I can, We can go get it in a minute, but I'll go back and I'll pull up the trail camera photos. There you go. You yeah. have them from that actual scrape? Uh, no, on another scrape right there, though. The, the one on the south plot. Let's see. Did we have pictures of him there? I know we had him up here on top of the, this scrape. That's not as good a photo. Hang on, I'm gonna find you guys a really good photo. Tracy says natural is better. I agree with Tracy. Natural scent, I'm assuming. Natural scrapes. Well, I will tell you guys, I like. There he, there is. he is. He's coming. Ooh, there, look at that crazy looking thing. Yeah, that's a nasty one there. Yeah. That deer right there, we called Holy Moly. And he's still alive and looks pretty much just like that. All right. So this is on a scrape right here that these deer are coming to. But I'm trying to. I thought I had some daytime photos. I mean, that's daytime, but. Right at dusk. Right at dusk. And here's the thing is, um, if I start seeing these deer showing up at that time, if I can get them showing up right at daylight or right at dusk, then we're, we're going to be on that deer pretty quickly. So in just a second, when Deacon, when you guys get a second, just uh, my briefcase is in your guys' office. Um, I'll hook up the video of shooting this deer, but like Warren was saying, so the first time that we got pictures of this deer actually was the year before. Yep. And he was... I think that is the year before you shot him. No, I nope. shot him in... No, nope, I shot him in 2017. This is 17. Um, but anyhow, he grew, I don't know, maybe 10 inches. Some, he Not didn't, a ton. Didn't, didn't, like, just jump out at, you know, but he looked very similar to this. But one of the things that we found very early was that he would respond to a scrape, or I did, because this is a place that I hunt that's not far from my house. And so anyhow, he was responding to this, and I was like, all right. So the next year, I actually went back and I opened that scrape myself. And I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna spray this. Now this is not the scrape where I ended up shooting him. And so I went in and I opened that scrape up, but sure enough, I got pictures of him, and I think you might've seen a handful of, of other deer. Um, and when I say opened up a scrape, what, what, what I'm doing is I'm going in and out. You can take a stick, you can take an antler, you can take anything you want and scrape that ground apart. And I don't start off by making a giant scrape. I try to make something, I don't know, that big around. You know, I'm trying to make something that's two foot wide. And so, make sure that they have those limbs there and everything that they need to make the scrape. Because absolutely, if, if you don't have those limbs, I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen them even use that. Well, uh, I'm sure there's some scenarios but they like those twigs they like those overhanging trees you know and and you can find those trees where they've already um they'll bite on them and they'll chew on them and they'll pull them down and then other times they just it's just they break them off from rubbing their head on it because that forehead gland has a lot of scent in it as well and so if you can't if they don't have it then i'll make one and you can either bust them off there's some companies now making those um you can go buy a stick and put it over top of them uh, but Which I, s- I would like to try one of those, especially yeah. like in a food plot, just see if you can get them kind of oh, I'm sure. put them right where you want them, you know, well, if they look like they've been pretty effective. But so if he, you guys have tried those, let us know. Well, here's one of those things, though. Don't let your wife go down. So I had one in the south field, and I mean, it was absolutely perfect. And I had a camera sitting there year after year, and I would get pictures all the time. And anyhow, Karen and I go down one day because we have a stand right by the scrape. 
and we're walking down the edge of the field, and all of a sudden she's walking behind me, and I hear snap, and I turn around, and I'm like, what did you just do? She said, I broke that limb off. It was sticking out in the field. She broke the daggone scrape, the, the one limb that was <laughs> hanging over the thing, and so I had to go back and make a fake one and put it on there, but they still came to it. But when you open those scrapes, start off with something not so big. Um, I'm not a big fan of urine, um, uh, just because I have a horrible story to tell people, which I won't get into right He's now. He's referring to deer urine. Deer urine. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, of urine. I'm not against it. I can say that. It's not that I don't think it works. Which I think is a good thing to address. Is that That's one of the number one things we hear is, can you pee in a scrape as a human? Yes. It's, yeah. Uh, you're not going to hurt anything. It, and this is what we learned, actually. Water. From, yeah. Is it's Sometimes it's more important to take water to a scrape that you want to help, that you want to freshen up than it is to take a scent. Because when you pour that water into the scrape, it, make, it brings all of those smells, the moisture basically reactivates all of those scents and will make those scrapes a lot more powerful. That might, um, so by putting moisture in there, just pour some water in that scrape, that's even gonna be probably more important than, have, than spraying the scrape itself, is having that water and reactivating those scents. Um, Mark says, how does a buck determine where to make a scrape, or is it random? I don't know that a, a deer necessarily determines, okay, I have to make a scrape here, but I would say that the places that we find them the most often is um, high traffic areas, field edges. Um, we do find some in the timber, some really big ones in the timber. We just don't find them as often, I think, because we're not walking through the timber when we're hunting. Do you have anything that you'd say that a buck says, I'm going to make a scrape here for this reason? Obviously, some is territory. So, so what was it? Was it Mark that asked the question? Yeah. Mark, one of the things I would tell you is community scrapes. Okay, so there's different types of scrapes. There's scrapes that bucks find um, that they make. Um, there, so let me back up. There can be a scrape that a buck will make as he responds to another buck. And that can be you making sounds that make him think that there's another buck. I mean, I've had bucks that were walking through the trees. Which is a great thing. That's a great it's sign. It's a great sign. But, I mean, you're sitting in a tree. You hit rattling antlers at a deer, and he's 100 yards away. And you see him turn. He starts rubbing the tree, and now he's pawing and everything. He is telling you something. He is answering. So that's probably not going to be a scrape that he comes back to time and time again. He was just responding to that deer. Um, the other kind can be where they start to begin to mark their territory. And uh, again, I'm not a big rub hunter. I don't find rubs unless I find a certain type of rub um, that I sit on. I've found what everyone's always talking about, rub lines. Man, I got 50 rubs that go down this trail or down this ridge, and I'm going to sit on them. I've never found that they continually come back to those rubs. Now, the difference would be a sign. On a, you're talking rub on a tree? Ru small rubs on trees where it looks like they just went through and raked it. Right. Well, and I can tell you, we had a, uh, I put a camera on a rub last year that was about that big, thinking that I was going to get a bunch of pictures. And I believe I put it there on like October 24th or something like that. And I can tell you from October 24th through December 1, I never had one deer actually rub on that tree. I got a lot of pictures of bucks there and, and a ton of deer in that area, but I didn't get a single buck actually rubbing on the tree. Um, I don't know if there's any reason that they weren't doing that. Maybe it's because we'd put scent too close to it or something like that, but a lot of bucks around it, but not a single buck actually rubbed on that tree for over a month. Well, the biggest factor was that they were on the tree. For what? Right. So, so here is an example of a deer that I shot from a signpost rub, okay? And I, and I think we've showed you guys this before um, when we were talking about something else. But I think in this video you will actually see, okay, so what you can see on that video there is this tree, this tree, this tree, this tree, this tree. All of those trees have been rubbed, and they have not been rubbed one time. They've been rubbed year after year. If you look at this, this tree is actually worn out on this side. That one right on the back side is like an hourglass. These bucks have rubbed this tree over and over again. This kind of rub means something different, in my opinion. Um, and what, that mean, what this was telling me was 
Number one, we want to let everyone know this is a place that we congregate. There's a huge trail that goes through here. There's food on the, be to the north of this deer, and to the south would be more bedding area, like a CRP, and then this strip of timber that actually goes through there is a heavy bedding area because yep. it's really thick thorns. Those trees right there are the largest trees in there. You could not put a um, tree stand in there anywhere. The only way to hunt it was with a ground blind. So we're actually sitting in a ground blind about 20 yards from this deer right now. So my point is there was no scrape in here. Now, one thing that I did when I, I hung a camera is to the left and then I set this blind in there. The other thing that I did was I made a scrape just off those rubs and I just sprayed some of the, the, um, the I didn't spray urine. I sprayed the glandular scents in the trees, busted a limb off and then I pulled back some of the, the leaves and stuff and cleared it open. And I got several pictures of these bucks. Um, it was a natural area for them to do that. So when we're looking for a place, though, to answer Mark's question, field edges are probably number one. That's probably yeah. the first place that I would look for scrapes. Um, number two, um, you will find them in the trees sometimes, but it's usually like in a cleared off area. Um, and for whatever reason, like around here, mulberry trees, some, some kind of tree, locust trees where they, where they hang over and the deer will get underneath Mulberry there. trees a lot. A lot. You find a lot of yep. on that. And so anyhow, particular types of trees, look for those, and, and you can find them right now. Like we just started uh, scouting a new farm, and that one tree there on that, that high point, and again, it's not an ag field, it's just grass. But I guarantee you, and that's an actual oak tree. That's not a mulberry tree, but the way the limbs hang, we knew there'd be scrapes there. We drove over there on the ATV, and sure enough, there was like eight or ten of them. Now they're all filled in with grass and stuff right now. But I would bet money we could go open one of those, pour some water in there, scrape. When, when you're making your own scrape, it's, it's, you got to get down to the bare dirt. Don't just move the grass. you got to get to the dirt. You want to rake that dirt up. You actually want to leave some scent um, in there. And that's where I think when people are talking about they're urinating in them, what you're doing is putting salt and other things that, that your urine contains that is just similar. These people are, Dakin's the one texting me. He's sitting right there and he's texting me. He's got a question. So, um, so anyhow, so <laughs> when you make these scrapes, um, make sure that it, when I, the one I haven't gotten to yet is the community scrape. Community scrapes are the ones that get really big. Um, and man, when you find those, and a lot of times there are two or three scrapes that in, it, it come together. And we have one on the edge of our food plot um, that we call the 80. That, that we just, it's just scrapes. But uh, that's not like, that's not a news flash. It's not like we have something that everyone else doesn't. I'll guarantee you every farm that's 40 acres or more probably has a place like that. I just, and man, when you find it though, you wanna have a camera hanging there. Yep, you know, and, you, and especially during October, you're gonna get a lot of bucks that, um, not necessarily maybe, maybe new bucks, but bucks that you just haven't seen yet, that they're traveling a little bit more and they're checking or they're coming by and they're willing to stop and um, hit a scrape. So. Nobody's gonna be able to hear that, but Dakin has good information back there. <laughs> All right, we don't need to see the shot unless you guys just wanna see it because but 12 yards is what it ended up being, 12 or 13. Did he actually rub on one of the trees? Oh yeah, and that's what I was gonna do. I thought I, I didn't know whether it was before that, but he actually, the, the very first thing that he does is come in and wears this tree out right there. Now look at that tree, and that's not from him doing it right there. He had done that, I mean, just time and time again. But the one that we wanna get to here, hang on, I just gotta find it. So Warren, you need to, Keep everyone entertained for a second so I can remember where it is. I don't think that's it. Huh? I said, I don't think that's it. Um, yeah, AJ says, let's see the shot, of course. You can't, you can't get there and then not show you guys the shot. Sure you that's can. That just would be not even right. Um, but I think scrapes, it also depends a little too on when you're going to really start targeting scrapes. In October, we spend usually the first two weeks mostly just shooting does. If we get really, really good weather and we get um, a big cold front coming in or something like that, we're going to be on the right food sources. 
uh, alfalfa, greens, but we're also going to be making sure that I'd say right after that, what, meaning like probably even the 16th through the 31st of October, scrapes can be one of the number one places to kill a big buck. Uh, if you can figure out it, find that scrape that that deer is using, uh, especially like a deer that's local to that area. We talked about this a little bit last week that that buck lives there and he's coming, going to his food source or his bedding area or whatever. He's not out really looking for does yet, but you're trying to catch him during daylight. A scrape can be absolutely one of the best places to kill that deer, especially before the rut when he starts going a little farther and traveling a little harder trying to find does. So, and I would say scrapes for me are becoming more. We've learned a lot about we, them in the last yeah, couple of years. La last two or three years, I've really started to focus on them more. And what I mean by that is up until then, I knew scrapes meant there was deer here. Great. I might hunt them. I was hunting them too late. By the time I was hunting them, the deer were already chasing does. When they start chasing does, th this stuff that people, everyone's like, oh, yeah, he'll chase that doe around. And then when he's done with that doe, he's going to go back to his scrape and find another one. Nope, not, at least not in Iowa or not where we're at. Too many does. Doesn't, go find a doe. He doesn't need to go back to that scrape. Now, I'm not saying that he won't ever. And they'll, sometimes they'll go by a scrape when they're going by it. But I don't think Absolutely. that they, they're not nowhere near as deliberate about making sure to go by a scrape. Correct. Once those are in heat as they are early. Right. And so that's where, like Warren was saying, if wherever it is that you live in the country, you want to look at what, if it's, if your peak of your rut is November 4th, let's say, or, or 10th, you want to look two weeks prior to that, or maybe even three. Um, because, it, it, I mean, you, and here's the crazy thing is I can't tell you how many times we get that random, uh, we'll go check trail cameras and on October 7th or 8th, a, a day where we weren't hunting scrapes or anything like that, all of a sudden it just blows up and it's on multiple different farms. So I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I don't believe does are coming into heat at that time. I just think the bucks are like something starting to trigger with them. And I've seen that happen often. If you were already sitting on scrapes, you would have probably benefited from it um, or had your camera sitting on them. Yep. So this is back to the deer. I finally found it. And what's going on here is this is a deer we call splits. And two years ago, so he was 172 or 171. 171. And Mine was 172. 172. Yeah, we need to make sure. Don't let him get those numbers backwards. Warren's he knows was one numbers. inch larger. <laughs> um, the, the, fun, the great part about it, I was there for both of them. I was there when he shot his filming it and I was there when I shot mine. But so we had set up on a scrape and I would tell you that this is a community scrape. This is a scrape that every deer in the country comes by is how we learned about it. Okay. And then Dakin brought up that there's four, he thinks he likes to qualify it as four different types of scrapes. The next one is a territorial scrape in my opinion. And that is right by this tree stand as Kyle and I were walking in. I knew there was a new scrape there, and that's why I told him, I said, I want to go hunt that, but I was really wanting to hunt a different tree that day. Um, I had a different deer and everything that I was after, and, I, and then, but the wind, no matter what, I don't care if it's the greatest scrape in the world, if the wind isn't perfect, don't hunt it. Yep. You're just going to ruin it. So we were wanting to go to a different tree, couldn't do it, ended up coming to this one. As we're climbing in the tree, I just remember telling him, do you smell that? And he was like, what? Oh, and, and I didn't even get the answer. And he's like, holy moly. It was like, so we thought kind of we missed something, you know, like there'd been a fight right there because it was the strongest deer odor I've ever smelled. But we climb up in the tree. We get in there. We've been sitting there about an hour. We're not seeing much. It's October, early October or mid-October. And I just happened to look out behind us and there's a field back there and saw a one racked buck going across the field. And I kept glassing it until I could tell it was busted. And so I told Kyle, I said, I'm going to hit the horns, you know, who knows, we got a scrape I, or something has happened right here. And I can't remember whether it was before then or after then that we looked down and we saw the scrape and it's like half the size of this desk. It's huge. And I'm like, well, we got this scrape. We got a deer with one antler. Let's throw the antlers together and see what happens. Really thinking that the one antler buck would show up and watch what shows up. And I mean, this didn't take 20 seconds. Monster. Monster buck. A 
Okay, so there he was. That, that was him responding to my rattling. That's how we first saw him. The cameraman actually saw him first and said, there's a deer making a scrape. And I looked through binoculars and realized it's split. Now, I'm going to shoot him standing in the scrape. He actually walks over, and you might be able to see right in front of him is the actual scrape. Now, we've edited this some, so this is going to take a little turn here. That was an antelope, Warren's first antelope, Karen's first Iowa buck, Karen's first mule deer buck, Warren's first whitetail buck, Warren's first set of braces, Easton's biggest whitetail buck. Oh man, we didn't get to the Look, I told today. you it was edited. You can scroll. For And that's right there as far as he goes. So that was the shot there. That's where Tipped and over. he was how far from the scrape there? He was in it. He, he actually it. he actually stopped in it when I shot him. And we were uh, 13 yards. Now, but it's I want someone to understand that. We didn't hang that stand knowing over that scrape that, that yeah. close. The stand was already there, and it just so happened that it worked out that it was there. I knew we were in, a, in roughly in the right area, but I didn't know that he had made that until we were in the tree and smelled it, and that's how strong it was. Right. But it's really good to note that that was not November anything. That was October, I, I believe that was October 21st. October 21st or 22nd. I don't think it was the 23rd. I think the one the year before. But I got some trail camera photo or video that I want to show you guys for this time of year, and that's what I was hoping that I could find. I don't think that I had any of these on video that at this time of year, but I'm going to show you some video um, of these bucks of what kind of video or what kind of um, what we're getting by having it set on video at a scrape. So watch this buck come in. Now I would tell you our cameras typically I'm, I, you know, eight, ten yards, or eight, six, eight yards, something like that, that we have them back, this one's too close. And that's because it was a fallen tree, and it was the only place that I could put it, and they had already made this scrape. And I, I went in and broke it open, though, and made it more. And they were crushing this scrape. We had, how many bucks do you think we had on that scrape? Oh, if it had I, to been 15. At least 10 or 15 different, different bucks, bucks hitting this scrape. Um, but I actually have, I think... On the 20th, yeah, I see that's a picture, so I think it's right. Okay, so this is actual video of me opening up that scrape. So what I'm doing right now is spraying the limbs above, spraying all that stuff above there, and then I, I can't remember whether I needed to do anything rubber boots on so that I'm not leaving a bunch of my scent. And again, now watch, I'm not spraying a ton of this. It's not like where we're pouring urine in there or anything like that. And I, what I'm doing is I'm spraying all of those limbs that those deer have um, been rubbing on. And I don't know if I have the video of me taking the stick or not and actually opening that scrape up. Nope. I thought I did, but I don't. Pay, pay attention, too, to the sense that you're putting in the scrape and what you're putting where. I'm a big fan of using orbital on the overhanging limbs just for the fact that that's what a deer uses they, they're using that same preorbital gland and putting it on those twigs now look at this deer now this is if I recall I'm pretty sure we're in the tree right now after I sprayed all this stuff that deer is checking every single thing that I sprayed in there So the nice thing about when you make scrapes and then when you are, have a camera set on them and set on video mode is you're going to be able to see those deer really, really well for a long period of time. I don't even know which one this is. Let's see who that came out. I, I didn't edit all these. I just grabbed whatever. Uh, 
lots of deer. Like Warren was saying, lots and lots of bucks. Another little one. Next time. That's that big eight. We one. saw that one a minute ago. But you see, the first thing he does is urinate. Walks in and he's peeing in that. He's like, okay, I want everyone to know I'm here and that I left my mark here. So then the next deer shows up. See, and they'll get on their hind legs like this, where they're actually stood up, pulls the limb down, rubbing his head all over it. See him rubbing that forehead? Coordination. Impressive on that one. This is that this is one of our dominant bucks. He's not necessarily a, a big ant or big racked buck, but he's definitely one of our dominant bucks and he comes in here. This is the kind of deer that we want to get rid of some of them because they come in and take over. And it seems like those deer a lot of times are small by Iowa standards, small eight point bucks. Um, and this one's no different. And he comes in and he see Saint they're all after that one limb that I sprayed so heavily. Now he's going to urinate. See him rubbing his back legs together there? So he's peeing down that tarsal gland. And see the scrape is over here and he's opening up more of it. And they just keep making it bigger and bigger. But this all started with just, there you go, there's a better deer. And that's like a 10 deer buck last year. Yep. Yeah, but this is different place. Fifty but, miles away. Yeah. So I don't think they're the same deer. But man, guys, I'm telling you, if you're not hunting scrapes, if you're not sitting on them, you need to be, and you need to be starting to think about them now. Um, I can tell you right now that this is the time of year. Matter of fact, I, I have one or two that I've kind of been watching. There was one the other day that what I did was I went ahead and um, I, I went ahead and pulled some of the leaves and stuff out of it. I didn't open it up. I haven't seen one yet that's been pawed fresh or anything like that, but I am watching for it. And then Warren's got a jug of water that he's carrying, just a gallon jug that he drinks water out of. That's what I'll do when I'm going out to check our cameras. And when we start using the scrapes, I just throw a, a gallon of water in the, in the ranger with me and some of that spray. And I spray the limbs and I pour the water and just put a few things of spray in there um, and then call it good. And I've even done it like you saw, I was hunting in that one scenario where I'll take the water I was going to drink and pour that in there just to give it that fresh, fresh scent. Yep. We had uh, one question earlier is, how often do you refresh in a, a scrape? Um, which I, th I think that's kind of a loaded question. It just depends a little bit on the weather and how many deer are hitting it, because the deer may be re freshening it up some for you. But well, I'd say we're probably once, a, once week. a week. And and the reason I would say once a week probably is because we don't want to be in there checking cameras. We're not going in every two, three days to check that camera. Um, so you want to let the deer be able to do what they normally do. now. If I hunt there and then I was going to come back and hunt the next day, I would probably freshen that scrape again right when I got there. Yep. Um, I have a, a, a deer I was hunting last year and I didn't end up killing him and, and I never got a shot at him. But every time I hunted that stand, I didn't find the scrape until later on. And But every time I freshened it, he returned. Problem is he kept coming in at night and then I just never had a daytime chance at it. Yep. Sean Bryson says, what's your thoughts about setting up licking sticks? I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a, um, I'm not, I don't want to sit here and tell you I know a lot about them as far as using one. I'd like to try them. But, but I would tell you naturally, 100%. And so if you have some that you're thinking about doing it, I would say it's worth the money to, to get one. Um, a lot of companies are making different things like that. So, um, and, and, I, and it's no different than what we're talking about, though, is making one that you actually, you can break off something yourself. You can wire a limb the way you want it and put it on there. But there's some companies, uh, Dakin, who's the one that's got the one that wires around or wraps Scrape around? Fix. What is it? Scrape Fix? Yeah. Scrape Fix has got the one. Vine. What's that? The Vine. The vine. Jeremy's um, got one too. The yeah, Hodag licking stick. His licking stick is a little different. Yeah, you his know? is kind of a standalone. So you well, can like put it in a food plot or something like that. Right. And so what it is is a spring and you put a tree down in it and then that spring and he puts it in an open area and those deer come over and mark it because it's the only tree out there. Which I, is slick because you can kind of, if they're using it as much as it appears like they are, yep. you can really kind of put them wherever you want them to be. 
Well, especially like you got a, let's say you got a 50 yard wide uh, food plot and you're only going to be able to shoot 20 or 30 yards of it because yep. your tree stand's not on the edge. It's in the timber a little bit. Putting, the, putting that licking stick right there. Gives um, them a reason. A to reason to there. walk over there, yeah. as opposed to them being able to possibly be feeding in that um, food plot or in that um, uh, whatever that area is that they're feeding in. Naturally, he may or may not come over to you. But, but uh, I, yeah, that hodag licking stick, I think there's something to it. Yep. Um, so uh, I, I know that all of us get skeptical of, oh, boy, someone's got this new thing and it's going to do this. I've seen turkey calls that I'm like, what? Um, but at the same time, don't be afraid to get out of the box and try something completely different. Uh, you know, like Warren and I were talking the, a few times that we've hit antlers and stuff like that at in October or even September. We can't hunt here in September, but like in Montana, I've had deer respond. I've actually called an elk in in March. So, I mean, the day one, here's what I tell. I do seminars across the nation and guys, I'm telling you right now, if you don't put your... If you don't put your calls and you don't put your antlers in your pack the day that deer season starts, you're going to be, there's going to be a day you're going to go, why didn't I have my stuff in here already? Because the deer don't have a calendar like we do. They don't know this is when it's supposed to start and this is when it all works. And if you're doing it correctly, if you're making those sounds, putting out scents and things like that at the right time when the deer, you'll never, you'll, you'll have a day when a deer is just going by and you got nothing to lose. You know, I can try this on him and see how he responds. And you want to be able to do that. If you don't, you, if you don't have it with you, 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 you just miss that opportunity. Yep. So. Yep. Well, I think that's a pretty good uh, base on scrapes. We might have to revisit this one a little later in the year when we have, uh, when it's a little more timely as well, just to go over them. But I'd make sure before October gets here that you're starting to really think about that and October be paying attention to them. Yeah, no, I, I would. Which we don't get to do because we're elk hunting. So, yeah, Dang. I was going to say, Dakin just said that the, the first, that you say first of September, I would, I would say I start making mock scrapes even a little earlier than that. And maybe that's because I do know that a lot of times I'm gone. And so I'll make them August 15th to the 20th or something like that. But the deer, to me, are still, I agree with him that the key there is velvet coming off. When that velvet comes off, because right now, just like today, I checked some trail cameras and I got no pictures of bucks. And then all of a sudden, one picture, I got eight of them show up. They're all a little tiny, but they're all somewhere together. So either, and then when that, but when that velvet comes off. And I'm in the same boat as you this year. I think we can drive that back. Yeah. Before we go out west, I'm making those mock scrapes. We're going to put some antlers in. We're going to move Yeah. And so what Dakin is saying is he'll be with us, and so he's going to move up his time. So if you're going to be gone or you know you're going to miss your trail camp, you know, not be able to check them, don't, don't be hesitant to go ahead and move a camera over, make a scrape, leave it, and know, okay, I'm not checking this one for two, three weeks. Yep. Um, I would rather do that than have it sitting in a place where it's just on a field edge and don't know what I'm catching. So. Yep. Jose says, what's up, guys? Sorry, I had the in-laws over for supper. What have I missed? You believe he values his in-laws yeah, over no, us? no crap, man. What the heck, Jose? Jose, Jeez. You, you need to get your priorities straight. You missed you, everything, man. Deer season's <laughs> coming. Is Karen listening? I hope not. No, I'm kidding. No, very cool. Um, like I said, uh, it's it's just getting close, man. This is, this is a fun time of year. You can feel the air cooling off here. It's getting exciting. So um, we're not going to keep dragging you guys on. There's a whole bunch of new elk tips that we just uploaded in the app. So if you plan on going elk hunting, if you, one, thank you to everybody that already has the app. If you don't have the app yet and you're going elk hunting and you aren't an expert hunter or you net, uh, haven't had much success, I would highly encourage you to check out those elk tips um, because he has had a lot of success. And we've figured out kind of a formula to make that work and get you guys opportunities at elk especially with your bow. So make sure that you check those out and it will, I promise you, it will absolutely help you increase your chances dramatically when it comes to elk hunting. So uh, new tips there, there's gonna be new tips coming, new partner deals. So um, if you already got the app, you obviously are a very smart individual. If uh, you don't, you'll be a lot smarter once you do. <laughs> um, the only other thing we have is Raise It Full Draw has a fundraiser, which is an archery and golf tournament. So no, you don't get to walk the 18 holes and shoot. 
your bow, but you do get to shoot on the golf course. It's going to be September 28th at Willow Creek in West Des Moines. So go to our website, racehunting.com, and then go to the Raise It Full Draw section, and you can um, check that out right there. So uh, Mark's asking if I work out, bro. No, I'm just genetically gifted, and it's a lot of elk meat. Wow. So, it's an air valve. You get the right air yeah. valve, and it works. Hey, the one thing that you should mention, because I think we've had three or four people this week alone, and I see yep. you got yours sitting over there. And that was not staged. We actually no. both had these in our pockets. The Which, if you have the app, you can get 50% off on these. Just a stealth cam, um, a card holder, I guess, would be the Yeah, SD card, card it. holder. And it goes, what we do is, after we've checked cards, we just flip them over so that we know that they're um, they have pictures on them, or we just hold them to one side. And this one is pretty slick because it's pretty small. I mean, I literally put this in my pocket when I'm going around and checking cards. And as you can see, it's it's really durable. You could drop that. You could um, you could drop that out of a tree or whatever, and you're not going to mess up your cards. It's a lot better than those little individual ones and trying to keep track of the five ones. Or the six ones that you put in the washer. You know, and then yeah. they come out, you know. Now, the one little thing that I would, and I don't know where everyone saw this, but all of a sudden this week, I've had like four or five people message me and say, hey, where, where do I get that card thing? The only thing that I will tell you that can be cumbersome is they have a little spot there that's supposedly your fingernail to go in there, and I've damaged some cards by trying to poke at them. I take the corner of a card now. And or just, just don't use that side. It, that little divot is on both sides, so don't use the side that the card thing is on. If if I'd ever done that, he'd have given me so much crap and said, "You have no I'm, common sense," because I even figured that out. So go from the bottom of the card where it's just no, that's plastic. What I'm but it, but like what I'm saying right is, there. if it's in there really tight, it doesn't matter. You take the corner of a right. card either way, whichever way you want to go. But don't you use the put side the corner in there. On. Don't use your knife because your knife can damage the card. So, yep. All right, there's our there's the little pro tip of the week, I guess, man, because that thing is like, I love it. Yeah, that is that thing has been slick. Um, do we have anything else? Mark says he just got his in the mail today. Mark oh, is just always one step. He must ahead. have been one. Of, he was one of them, I think. The message. Asking. Yeah. Um. Oh, the last thing, uh, Sean just said, how close are you guys to Knox County, Missouri? This will be the seventh year hunting there. Absolutely great place. We are going to be in Missouri this weekend. We're going to be in Lebanon, Missouri, uh, pretty much all weekend. Do you remember the name of the church? I don't. But if you go to our website, I'm pretty sure Karen already has yes, everything and on there. There's a go to the Facebook page that you're on right now, and there's an event for it created. We're going to be there pretty much all weekend. We're going to be doing uh, seminars, hanging out, wild game feed. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we are. There's already supposed to be, uh, I think, around a thousand people there. So a bunch of like-minded. Folks, all getting ready for hunting season, so come hang out with us this weekend. That's in Lebanon, Missouri. Well, and, and because the one thing that I think we should talk, tell you guys, when you do come to something like that, we have more time where we can sit down and we can physically touch some things. Um, we're going to carry some of the equipment there. So if you're one of those guys out there thinking that you're going to become rich and famous by um, starting to film your stuff and putting it on YouTube or on TV or whatever, um, you know, come down there. We'll help you with understanding what it takes to put stuff together, both uh, doing it as an individual, just doing it for fun, or if you want to do it, you know, where you can hopefully make some money. Um, we're going to have, that's one of the seminars that we're doing. Um, so we'll be talking about that, but we're also going to break down some whitetail stuff. And again, when you have something you can physically touch and see, um, it just, it just, at least I learn better that way. So I think yep. others do too. Yeah, I mean, we can get way more in depth even in person, yeah. so. It'll be good. It'll be a fun time. I'm looking forward to it. So I think with that, we're out. I'm huh? out. Good. Everybody have a good night. See you guys.